Bond movie, No Time to Die, has hit the box office, along with Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And joining us now to talk about both of these movies is our film critic, Tom Santelli. Hey, Tom, good to be with you, as always. Hey, Jan, what's happening? I'm super excited. Big weekend for the movies. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start with Venom. That broke records last yes. weekend at the top of the box of the office, but its reign might be kind of kicked off the pedestal a little bit because of the much-anticipated James Bond movie, No Time to Die. What can you tell us about that film and its journey to the big screen? Yeah, absolutely. So Venom, uh, Let There Be Carnage, was uh, panned by critics, including this one, and uh, just totally surpassed all expectations, made $90 million at the box office last, last week. Uh, Bond, of course, is supposed to uh, beat that this week. It's supposed to be between 60 and 80 million is what they're saying, but I feel like it's going to be way bigger than that. This movie has been, uh, you know, anticipated for so long. It was de uh, delayed even before the pandemic. It was originally supposed to come out in November of 2019, uh, and it's finally reaching theaters now. Uh, and I just think that people are clamoring. This is the kind of movie that you want to see on the big screen, right? And uh, I'm just excited for people to see Daniel Craig in his final Bond film. And we were talking about all the hype during the break that has precipitated this film. We both really like Skyfall. You saw the film, Tom. I have yet to see it. What did you think? I loved it. I think that most James Bond fans are going to love this film. It definitely feels like the end of a chapter, though. I mean, I'm sure that there will be more James Bond, but this definitely feels like the end of the Daniel Craig era. And uh, it, it's really good. It starts off great. It ends great. There's a little slow, you know, this in the middle. The Bond villain this time around, played by Rami Malek, is not uh, one of those great, you know, iconic Bond villains. Uh, but I think there's there's everything we expect, right? The action. The, uh, the the emotion and really there's a good story that I think people will attach to. Um, I spoke with the cast this week uh, about how important Daniel Craig is to this franchise. And I think we might. He brings an incredible intelligence to the part. He's very very. He's highly aware of the the script uh, evolvement, the story he's part of. I actually love when Daniel does these really sensitive scenes. I love when he's in love and, you know, um, he's so brilliant at managing to do that. I think Daniel is one of the best James Bond ever. A lot of the time you'll have uh, someone shouting at you during the scene because, you know, you know as well as uh, I do, that a lot of the effects will be added on later so you don't actually see them. So someone will shout, gunfire or explosion or so you kind of have to act and react to that. Um, and pretend that you're seeing things and it, it can be very very technical you know I've been incredibly fortunate to, to, to have been given that chance to explore this character uh, in this way and we felt like there was a, a story to finish off and to and to and to wrap up and and, and to, to, to sort of tie up a lot of loose ends now Tom you mentioned that this movie is definitely expected to top the box office do you have any estimates for us what are people saying yeah, again, I think like on the low end, they're saying about 60 million to 80 million. It's definitely going to be number one at the box office because you know Venom will will come down in its second week. Uh, but I feel like this movie could uh, be better than what Venom did last week, 90 million. I think that these estimates are low, and I think that people are going to get in theaters to watch No Time to Die. And with Daniel Craig's final performance as Bond, any word yet or projections on who might take the torch from him and be the next James Bond? Daniel Craig was my favorite. Oh, yeah. I mean, Daniel Craig has won me over for sure. He's my favorite Bond. This is an ongoing thing, right? Everybody, even while Daniel Craig is, is Bond, people are talking about who's going to be the next Bond. Uh, Big shoes know, Idris to Elba. Fill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Idris Elba has been uh, rumored for years. I think he would be a great Bond. Uh, because of Bridgerton uh, recently, the, uh, you know, Reggae, oh, Reggae Jean, Jean Paul, Page, yeah. Uh, yeah, has, has shot up in, into the, the stratosphere of a possibility. Tom Hardy has been even mentioned. Um, I definitely think that they will. They've been taking care of this franchise for, you know, going on 60 years, so I'm, I'm sure that whoever they choose is going to be great. Remember, too, when Daniel Craig was first cast, not everybody was in favor of it, and he won us all over. So I, I trust the Broccoli family and MGM. That's the thing. Over time, you, you get to love that James Bond character. Those three are all really, I could see all three of them in those roles. So a lot to look Absolutely. forward to on the movie front. Tom Santilli, Movie Show Plus, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Great to be here, Jen. Thank you. We'll be right back. 
Here's what we're working on for you for Monday morning. More and more families are turning to crowdfunding to help pay their funeral and medical costs. We're digging into the trend and looking at the potential dangers of it. Join us here Monday morning on 7. Right now at the Gardner White Columbus Day Sale. Get the best deals in town. Save up to $300 on the largest selection of Tempur-Pedic mattresses in Detroit. All in stock with free same-day delivery. We make it easy. With 0%